Hello and welcome back to uh, the second video on annotated bibliographies. How to how to do that? Annotated bibliographies are fun. Yeah, I I've got um I, I write I write with a fountain pen, so I, I write my annotated bibliographies by hand. I've got a booklet specially for that. Um, but before I get carried away, I, I can show you that later. But um, um, I'll show you how to do this for this particular assignment. So, what do you have to do? Well, it involves um, compiling, choosing six references about a certain topic. And that's the same topic that you had to do your group presentation about. Your tutor will, will tell you more about that. Um, so, in that small group presentation, which you do in the, the week beginning the 8th of October, as a group, you have to find articles. You can choose one of these three uh, topics. So articles about either uh, does psychopathic personality differ across cultures, uh, what causes highly superior autobiographical memory, and what is the best way to treat people with depression. So as a group, you will find lots of articles. You choose one and you give a presentation about that in the week of the 8th of October. Then you have to write an annotated bibliography about six of those articles. So you probably found a lot more, but you have to choose uh, six that you find the most interesting. What you have to do, and this is work you do on your own, so the group presentation obviously is in a group, annotated bibliography is on your own. So you need to, to list them in APA format, in alphabetical order, by author's surname. Below each reference, you must provide an annotation. So an annotation is a very brief paragraph, and that includes um, a brief summary of the reference, what is it about, and an explanation as to um, to what extent does this article that you've read actually help you answer that presentation question. So does it actually give you an answer to um, you know, which is the best way to treat people with, with depression, for example. Um, the word limit is 700, which includes the references. That seems not very much, but at the same time that helps you to gauge um, how much do we actually expect from you. We don't expect huge long essays, we just expect a brief annotation. And it's also a good practice in writing concisely. Um, so this is what it will actually uh, look like. Um, so this is one of the um, things I actually wrote myself. Um, so my questions, and this is what you do, you put the, the presentation question at the top. In this case it was um, our recollection and familiarity truly two different processes. Recollection and familiarity are, are two different ways of remembering things. Um, so I found articles here that are related to that question and answer it in some way. So I put them in alphabetical order, so Hockley, Jacobi, uh, and Klein. So that goes by, by surname of, of the authors. Uh, you put the annotation, so a little paragraph, below each reference. So not above it, but just below it. Um, you don't need to provide a separate reference list at the end, because the references are already here in the text. So this is what the format of the thing will, will look like. So just to give you an example of an individual annotation. So you, you got the, the reference uh, that Hockley, the effects of environmental context on recognition, memory and claims of remembering. Um, so below you put the, the annotation. So in blue that's the, uh, the little summary. So this article tests uh, whether the effects of context on memory can be influenced by experimental instructions in a between subject design with 40 participants. Hockley found that when the experimenter mentions confidence in the instructions, participants respond based on memory strength. So that's a summary. And then you put in the next section in red, that's the, you know, to what extent does it answer the question. Uh, this helps to answer the presentation question by suggesting that memory processes are not set in stone, but subject to distortions. In other words, the article suggests that recollection and familiarity, familiarity are not two different processes. 
all of that comes in just over a hundred words. That's in, that's the, the paragraph plus the, the reference. So that's six times and you've still got a hundred words left to play with. So you don't need to provide much, it can all be contained within a very short paragraph. Why do I have to do it? Why not to write outdated bibliography? Um, apart from the fact that it's fun and it, it's really nice thing to do. Um, especially if you have a fountain pen uh, and you like writing. Um, or if you've got a really nice laptop with a lovely um, fast responsive keypad. Um, now, why do you have to do it? Um, it's part of the research process. Before any researcher starts a new study, a new experiment, um, you have to know what's out there, what have other people already done, and you need to keep track of that. You need to write down all the articles that you've read on that topic, and you need to write a bit about, okay, what did this article found, and is it going to be useful or not? When you then do your own study, and you have to write your article, your own article, um, when you write the introduction, you can just look at your own annotated bibliography and go, all right, I need an article about this. What, 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 what can I find? What if I, um, what have I written down about it? And you get to build your own article by inserting things that you, you've already written down. So it, it helps you to know what, what's out there, keep track of what's out there, so you're not uh, repeating what other people have done. Um, we also, in this assignment, get you to practice uh, using APA style. And that's because APA style is required for most uh, scientific journals. So it, it's a really good thing to, um, to be able to do. When do you have to do it? Um, well, it works the same as with uh, the scientific article questions. Um, you have to submit it to turn it in um, before midnight on the day of your normal practical. In this case, in the week beginning the 15th of October. So if your practical is on Tuesday, that means before midnight on Tuesday the 16th. How will it be marked? Um, well, we, we look at um, the APA style and we look at the content of your, your paragraph, your annotation. So you get one mark for each reference that is in correct APA and you only get the mark if it is perfect APA. So. Um, Sometimes somebody misses out one comma six times. <laughs> you miss out six points. Um, so it really is. It's very easy to get right, and it's it's also very easy to to get wrong. Um, but the bulk of the marks so comes from what you've actually written. So two marks per reference um, uh, for you know, how clearly you you summarize the article and how well you explain um, whether it or not it helps to answer the, the presentation question. You also get four additional marks, um, we call them floating marks, um, and that's based on um, you know, how broad is your range of reading, uh, you know, have you taken them all from the same g year, from the same journal, or have you read um, a more wider range, so have you got so recent articles as well as older articles, and do they all come from, from different journals. So that's important. Uh, so you get a mark out of 22, 22 points, but that will be converted to uh, a mark that you're familiar with, uh, A's, B's, C's and D's, and hopefully not, not E's and F's, don't, don't aim for that, um, always always go for gold. Um, so some frequently asked questions, some a bit more obscure than others. Um, can I include my presentation article? Yes, you can. Maybe in your group, when you gave the presentation, you, you've got a really interesting article that you want to talk about or you want to write about. Please do, but make sure you don't collaborate with your group members. What if I go over the word count? Um, well then you will lose marks from your, your floating marks. That's because if you write more, you give yourself more opportunity to include more content, which would not be fair to other students who have stuck to the word count. Um, can I do more than six references? Yes, but you do make it harder for yourself to um, you know, to stay within the word count. 
Can I use non-peer-reviewed articles? No. All your articles should come from peer-reviewed um, journals because we want you to get into the habit of, of reading um, only things that other researchers have, have looked at. Um, this is interesting. My tutor and I disagree about APA. Can I have it remarked? Well, it's, it's actually not possible to disagree about APA. Either, but one of you is going to be correct. Um, so I suggest you go to the library, get the APA manual out and actually look it up together. Um, and this last one, um, my cat peed on my laptop, can I have an extension? I'm only putting this question in because it has actually happened. This, this seriously happened once to a student. Um, the answer is um, no. Obviously if you are ill, that's different. If you have a virus, yes. If your computer has a virus, no. That, that's basically the rule. Or, or cats, you know, they, need to be, they need to be trained, right? But the real answer is you need to, you need to, you know, back up your, your work. Uh, don't uh, have it on one place. Make sure you've got multiple copies. Um, make it crash proof. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm a fine one for talking. I, I write if the building catches fire. Everything goes up in smoke. I've got nothing. Um, but be wiser. Be wiser than me and back up your work. Memory sticks clouds and things like that. Um, so I hope you will enjoy writing annotated bibliographies as much as I do and this again will help you for uh, the critical review. So have fun! <laughs>